What's going on guys, Zach here, and welcome to another Java game development tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at doing is creating some juicy effects for our menu system in the previous Let's Build a Game series wave. So here you can see it's pretty basic. Uh, we've got a play, help, and quit. If we hit play, you know, we've got whatever, normal, hard, and there are buttons that work. But I want to make it something better. I want to make it like I did in my Game Maker tutorial where I went ahead and made you know the effects where it would pop out at you and change different colors and all of sorts of that stuff. So we are going to be working in the code of our uh, Let's Build a Game project, but the what we're doing here can be easily transferred over to any other game just by using uh, the mouse adapter and um, we're going to be using the mouse motion listener as well. All right, so we've got mouse released, and here we have mouse over, which um, is going to be handy for us. Uh, I'm going to use this mouse over, uh, but if you don't really understand the mouse over, um, go ahead and check out those game development series, and uh, it'll explain it. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. The first thing I'm going to want to do is we're gonna create the public void mouse moved with the mouse event E. All right, so pretty standard, uh, pretty standard method. This is gonna be extended off the mouse adapter. And here I'm just gonna say int mx equals e dot get x. and in my equals e dot get y. So first I'm just gonna go ahead and test if we're over. So I can really uh, just copy all of this code that we had in our uh, in our mouse press because we're using all of the mouse over and all of that stuff. So if I go ahead and just pop that in there. So here's we got the menu state. So instead of getting the sound and playing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say system dot out dot print line uh, over play button. All right, so pretty standard. And then what I'm going to do is go into the game class here, and then in our constructor, we're also going to want to add this dot add mouse motion listener menu. All right, and let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see in the console, when we go over our play button, we see in the console that it prints out the play button. And I still have all the code in for all of this, so now when we just hover over it, it will <laughs> pretend like we're clicking it, which we don't actually want. So let's get rid of all that, all of this code here. All of that, that, and that. All right, so here, uh, pretty simple what we could do, and we could do a lot of things to this. So um, when we go ahead and go to our the top here, we're gonna put three different colors in. So private color, or you know, we could just do one color. Uh, menu button. And this is going to equal color dot, and we can make it whatever color we want. Let's, we'll make it blue then. All right. And then in our render method, right here, we're going to say um, g dot set color menu button. Should make sense and then we're going to set g dot set color color dot white underneath and you know what I think what we're gonna to have to do just by looking at this is we're gonna just gonna to have to make three different colors which is fine so we'll make it two three and I'll make that one and then I'll set the always make sure to set the color back to white underneath so we're it, we make sure 
sort of just like an insurance that we're only coloring this quit. So go back up here, we'll just say one, two, three, and we'll start off being white. So the idea for it is that we're just gonna change these colors once we're hovering over. So uh, let's go to mouse moved. And here, we're just gonna say uh, menu button one equals color dot blue. Else menu button one equals color dot white. So then we, here we have the help. And now this also allows us to make these colors completely different. So we can make this you know, green. And then here on our quit, we'll make this like purple. Oh, I don't think they have purple. We'll do pink. So now if we run the game, As you can see, check that out. So now when we hover over our buttons, we're getting sort of a user response, which is really cool. So now what we can do to make it even better is let's go ahead and when we hover over it, we extend out the actual box that it lays on. All right. So this is again getting more tricky and if you have a different sort of project, then it's going to look different uh, for you. But um, so here we can see that the values are 210 and 200 all the way around. The only thing that's different is our Y value. So here we can just put uh, button X1, which is going to be 210 and 200. So this is going to be button width 1. And we're going to go ahead and make these variables. Now you can make this into an array or do whatever you want just for the this tutorial and just so you guys can kind of see it better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it um, just all separate variables. So I'm going to copy this, paste it down two more times. So this is going to be two, this will be three. Again, pretty simple stuff. And then in our render method, so the idea is that we're just going to go ahead and change these values when we're hovering over. So that's button X2, that's button X3, that's button width 2, and button width 3. All right, so if we ran the game now, nothing should have changed. Nope, we still got everything. But when we hover over, um, where is it? When we hover over the play button, we're going to say, bx1, we're going to use a simple tweening algorithm, plus equals, and since it's uh, at default to 10, I believe, or is it 200? I think it's 210. Yeah. Uh, where are we? So default to 210, so we're going to say bx1 plus equals, and now this is our target, so we're going to say 110 minus bx1 multiplied by 0 0.0 one and then else we're going to take this copy it and paste it down at 210 and then we're going to say bw1 plus equals and we'll say 300 minus bx uh, bw1 multiplied by 0 0.01 and this defaults at 200 that's why I put it just 300. So we we put it uh, always. Oops. We always want to put it just 100. And and again, that's preference. You can even make like a method that does this for you, so it, it can look cleaner and has more readability. Um, so here I'm going to say bw1, and then when this else is when we actually just take it off. Um, oh, whoops. We got to do minus bx1 minus bw1. When we release the mouse from the play button, it pops it back to where it should actually be. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it down like this for these. And I'm just gonna change it to two.
and three. And this is button two and this is button three. So with all of that, it should now work. Let's go and run the game. So here we have it, if we hover over it. Oh, whoa. It's sliding to the left. Haha, <laughs> interesting. All right, so here's what's going on with this code. So since we're in the mouse moved, this code only gets activated if the mouse is moving. So here we have it, so it should normally go out like this. Let's see, I'm moving the mouse and then I come back in and then, it, and then I'll come out. Now obviously it's not working exactly how it should work now, um, but it's only when it's moving. So that's why we're kind of getting this weird laggy issue. So what we're gonna need to do is put this all into the tick event, or not all of it, just it reverting back to itself. So, and we can just basically say this by uh, saying, where is the tick method? Right here. If menu button one equals color dot white, which means it's not over, then we're just gonna boom pop it right back here. Copy this, paste it, paste it. Two and three. Two two. three and boom just like that and then in here let's get rid of all of this nonsense and we'll just say else there we go all right and we also have to do it for um, if the button's green so again this is only mouse motion so we're gonna take out all of this I just went ahead and tested it real quick just to make sure and we're gonna put it down here so let me just copy this paste it this is two this is three now I want you guys to see this that I put 230 instead of 210 for when it reverts back. Um, oh, actually, that needs to be right, right here. 230, and then this is going to be 110 and 400. 110 and 400. So I put 230 when it reverts back, and this is just to compensate for it losing the X and coming back. So, oh, and it looks like, uh, why is that already going? Oh, wait over now. else. All right. So if we run over this and we get off of it, boom, perfect. Just like this. And why isn't that working now? What is going on here? All oh, right, these need to be 0 0.05. My apologies on that. So we run it. Now we've got it all working and the menu system is now really cool looking. So we go back, obviously we didn't do anything there, uh, but that's gonna be it for today. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. So play around with the values, see what you can do with them. There's a lot of cool things you can do. We can start rotating these buttons. We can start doing a bunch of stuff with it. But just in you know this 15 minutes of doing this, we have now taken the buttons and instead of it having no user response, we now they change colors and they, they really just show you like, oh wow, cool, this is, this is uh, a cool looking menu system. So, Leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go and try for 100 likes this time. Visit CodyMadeSimple.com slash courses and find my Java game programming course for the beginner game designer. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.